You know, sometimes space is really tight and you just don't have a whole roof or a huge yard or a place where you can put your solar panels. And because of that, you need the most efficient solar panel you can get. This is the Renogy Shadow Flux, which is an N-type solar cell, which is supposed to be one of the most efficient solar panels you can get. And even though it's not bifacial, meaning there's no cells on the back, this is supposed to be able to make more power than other 200 watt solar panels, very similar to its size. My name is Ben, this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. I wanna see if the Renogy Shadow Flex is actually better because in a scenario like this where there's an apartment and I need to set up the solar panels, well, I can't lean them against the house because they're in the shade. And I can't lean them against the fence because once again, in the shade. Now this is supposed to work really well in the shade, but this is facing the complete wrong direction. And at different times of the day, this area is shaded by the house or the fence or the trees. So I'm gonna show you the ultimate setup for a lightweight portable solar panel like this and how you can use it in tight spaces to get the maximum amount of power output. Now in this box is a portable stand system that makes it more affordable to buy a normal solar panel and then add your own stand to it rather than buying a flimsy, expensive folding solar panel. It includes an anchoring system for high wind and the legs are also telescoping so you can adjust the angle of the solar panel depending on the time of the year to get maximum output. Because in a tight space like this you need to get every watt possible. That's really what this panel is for. And because I'm on a hard concrete surface I don't need the lower leg set that is an optional add-on for these legs. It includes a 7 16 wrench for tightening up all the bolts, a 13 millimeter socket for the anchors, and this Allen wrench in case you wanna take your clamps for the telescoping legs and get them even tighter. For right now, all I need is the wrench. And these stands work with any solar panel that has a frame on it that has these grommet holes. Normally this is easier to do on a table, but I'm just gonna lean it against the wall. If you wanna tighten the clamp to where this is just biting down real hard, all you gotta do is loosen or tighten this little black knob right Right here, it'll help it hold even stronger. Now I can set this up on the back patio right along the back edge. And just like that, I got it set up. So as this shade moves throughout the day, it's gonna start by covering this and then saying there's a side wall here that casts other shade in the morning. But for a tight space like this, we need more solar panels to max this out and see how well this does having multiple panels and having shade. So starting off, we're getting 116 volts and just over 500 watts. What I wanna find out first is what if we cover the majority of one single panel? And the way this is supposed to work is the diodes that are in these panels that help offset the shadowing effects are apparently built into each cell rather than to an entire panel. So that's why it's supposed to be so good at stopping shading effects. Let's go see what it's doing now. Would you look at that? That's actually incredible. We're making about 375 watts. It literally just took out one quarter of the whole array. Each panel is making about 125 watts right now. So basically across the board, we just lost 25% of the total input. I've never seen panels work this way. This is actually really cool. It's important to keep in mind that these panels are not directly facing the sun. You can see the shadow line here. That is the angle at which they are not facing the sun. If they were perfectly perpendicular to the sun, then this shadow would be all the way over to here directly behind the panel. So we're not gonna see full solar output from these panels in these conditions. Now I'm gonna cover just about one half of the solar panel. And we're back up to 450, it was just at 460 watts. So now it's basically three and a half panels worth of power compared to what it was doing before because we were a little over 500 and at 125 watts per panel, what these were making on average, this is basically making three and a half panels worth. This is awesome. Now what if we cover about a third of this panel and half of that one? Still making 340 watts. Wow, this is really cool. I have this piece of styrofoam that's got all these little holes in it. I think this could simulate what it would be like if a tree were overhead on one of the panels where some light is getting around the leaves and other parts aren't. Now, just like the trees that's over there, generally speaking, the trees are gonna start covering from one edge to the other first. So I'm gonna put this right here and let's see what it does. So this seems to have had the biggest effect. It's basically as if that whole solar panel is now no longer making power. So straight shading, whether that's from a pole or a wall or whatever hard line kind of shadow doesn't seem to have as big of an effect as having randomized holes, such as shading from a tree. The Shadow Flux has a major advantage of being able to make more power even when shaded compared to other solar panels. For that reason, I definitely like it. It's gonna come at a premium price. You're gonna pay a lot more per watt for a Renogy Shadow Flux 
compared to something you'd find even like a bifacial 400 watt residential solar panel because those are made for residential solar which is worldwide these are not these are going to cost more per watt i'm going to compare the renergy shadow flux to the bougie rv topcon 200 watt bifacial solar panel and then i'm going to take two shadow fluxes join them together in series and compare it to this Mission Solar 400 watt solar panel. And we're gonna see how these compare in full sun. We are at an angle, it's after three o'clock in the afternoon. So we probably won't get full power out of these. I would say that if you're in a tight Let's space, go ahead and see a how these compare patio against or each like other. First thing I'm gonna do is get the even wattage like of an a single RV shadow or a trailer, flux, then or the wattage of the single power where you wanna get RV, the maximum then the wattage of, of from a two panel. shadow flux, and these would be the top and then the wattage of the single 400 watt. I had to wait a couple of hours for the clouds to disappear, but you can see we have clear skies and the solar panels are in clear sun. It is about 5.30, so I'm not expecting to get full sunlight out of these, but we're getting about 115 watts out of the shadow flux, about 102 watts out of the Bougie RV 200 watt bifacial, around 230 watts with two shadow flux put together in series, and basically the same 230 watts with the 400 watt Mission Solar. I think the most impressive part of this is that the shadow flux is not bifacial and it's putting out a lot more power than the Bougie RV 200 watt panel. Now you'll notice there's some shade just starting to hit the Bougie RV panel. There was no shade on it when I was doing the test. Now it is later in the day, we're not gonna see the higher numbers, but this really goes to show that in the latter part of the day, you can still make good power. Where the shadow flux is really shining is that it's one of the most efficient solar panels for the size. So because of that, if you had a really tight space, like a back patio, like an RV, some small space where you're not gonna be able to get a lot of solar panels, that would also include boats and marine applications. If you need the most amount of energy per cell, then it looks like the Shadow Flux is a winner. And this is probably gonna be my new favorite over the Bougie RV 200 watt panel, just for the fact that this is making more power as a non-bifacial, and this has a smaller footprint than the Bougie RV 200 watt panel. So very sad to say that the Bougie RV did not perform better, but it's also good to know that the Shadow Flux is a much better producer for power. It's just so unfortunate that it costs so much. So make sure you check out the pricing down below, see if it's within your budget and would work for your application. And if I have any coupon codes or discounts that I can throw in with these, I'll have those in the description down below as well. Now, if you like these portable solar panel stands that allow you to get the bottom edge of the panel up off the ground or just use the upper leg set so that the bottom edge of the panel is resting on the ground which works really well on a hard surface like this. I'll have a video right up here that shows you all of the details about this and why I choose to use these over flexible or other solar panels. In the end you could basically buy one of these solar panels and the stands and be cheaper than a folding solar panel. If you want more info on that you can go to poweredportablesolar.com soon to be minutemansolar.com.